So next, I'll talk about how to use threads to do, you know, non-trivial things. So the example that I have here is called vector addition. So I'll talk about what vector addition is and then how can we use, you know, more than one threads to do vector addition. So the vector addition is defined as uh, you have uh, two arrays as input A and B and then you're supposed to uh, go over all the indices of the array and then pick up the um, elements at a given index and add them. So if I add, you know, 1 and minus 1, I get the 0 and I get 0 here, I get 0 here. So 4 plus minus 4 is 0 and so on, right? So this is what vector addition is, adding element-wise, you know, adding the respective numbers and these indices. Now, as you can see, uh, the thing that I did was called a single threaded vector addition because I used, you know, only one, uh, one pass through the array using one thread. Now, if you want to, you know, make this thing parallel or multi-threaded, then what you can do is identify or divide basically the problem into many parts. So if I have two threads, then I can, you know, divide this problem in such a manner that I draw a line here that I'm showing. And then the first thread will calculate the first half and then the second thread will calculate the second half, right? So four, five, six, seven, and minus four, minus five, minus six, and five. so these, right? So now this idea of dividing an array into multiple parts based on how many threads you have is very general. So I can extend that idea to three threads. So let's call this, uh, you know, let's say that there is a notion of chunk, meaning there is a part of the array that a thread will work on and that's a chunk, okay? so. As just to give you an example, thread zero will will work on. If you have two threads, then thread zero will basically uh, work on array A zero and array A one, array A two, and array A three right so this is the chunk for thread zero uh, so you know zero one two three those elements will be added to basically calculate array c half of the array c and similarly thread two will work on the remaining half right so array four and then array five you know array six array seven and we produce the result so this is what we call chunk so this is you know the first chunk and uh, the second half is the second chunk, right? So how can we, you know, find out what the chunk of the array a thread should work on? So we are basically finding a range of elements uh, that only one thread should work on and then the work should be divided. And work here basically means adding the individual corresponding in the index elements to produce the answer, array C. Okay, so... Uh, we need some kind of a formula that you know uh, lets us uh, do this calculation in you know in concurrently like simultaneously you should be able to do different parts of the array so that's possible using threads but we need a formula that basically gives us you know what a range of numbers um, a thread should work on so the one of the formula could be you know how many elements you have number of elements and that gets divided by number of threads so that many you do all right so here you have seven you have seven numbers and let's say you have three threads now then each thread should do two right so if each thread does two elements of the array then you know the seventh one uh, is the extra that should be done by one of the threads. So we need a formula so that, you know, we divide it evenly if it's completely divisible or unevenly uh, if it's an odd number. Uh, in this case, three doesn't divide seven completely. So we need to have a formula to do that. So in the class, we looked at, at the formula. So let's calculate, let's find out what that formula is. 
So I'll show you the formula, right? So this is the formula. So every thread has a unique identifier. We say thread ID and thread ID goes from zero all the way to number of threads. And we multiply thread ID by the chunk size. That's N over number of elements divided by number of threads. Uh, to get the start index and then we do thread ID plus one multiplied by chunk size to get n index okay so this is the formula that we use and for the last thread if the thread ID is the last uh, because the count starts from zero so the last one has one less than the number of threads so then we you know expand the range so this is the formula that we want to you know observe so if you use that formula here, then the for thread one, the start index is zero, and then the last index is two. For thread two, the start index is two, the last index is four. For thread three, the start index is four, and the last index is seven. So it became seven and not six because of this line, that if thread ID is equal to num thread, so thread ID two, and num thread was three minus one, two, so it was number of elements. So let me stop here or maybe pause here. Yeah. So I'm recording a video. Um, okay, so continuing on this. So now I guess it makes sense to, you know, calculate the range. So that idea has been used in create th threads method of vector addition that I'm um, I'm showing you here okay so with that idea being clear let's look at you know vector addition so we want to add vectors using two arrays so here I have a sequential vector addition and in the main I basically create those three arrays C is the output array I specify the number of threads and then I have this create thread methods which will create the threads okay so let's go to create thread method. Uh, as I showed you previously, you create an array of threads, um, calculate the chunk size, then find out the range, uh, you know, start index and end index, and then create a chunk. So chunk basically, mm, you know, is a is a is a class that uh, is used to store, you know, the start index, the end index and the references to these three arrays. So this is required because you know you need to pass some information to a thread like what it should do. So that information is in chunk. So for each thread the chunk information is different. Uh, I mean the start index and index is different. Array A, B, C remains the same. So we can have a look at chunk. So chunk has these parameters. So this thing I have discussed in class 2 you are just you know, in the constructor and this method you are you know assigning the arrays and the chunk starting end point and end, ending point okay so once you have uh, the create threads uh, once the thread gets created um, you do start right so when start happens then the control goes to run so what happens in run well it uh, the set chunk method provides it's the chunk so that's what contains the start index and end index and it uses it to calculate the vector sum, right? So if you compare with, um, you know, sequential or single threaded vector addition, uh, the single thread actually looped from zero to the last of the last element of the array, but in a multi-threaded version, it, a thread only does part of the job and not the entire, right? It only does the vector addition for a small part of the array. So that's how you get concurrency so different threads will be running this program running this run method but on a different section of the array right so this uh, program I have shared so you can take a look at it and uh, there's a join statement and I print the results to verify if it's correct or not 